Hello. We are here today, gathered once more for disassembling a lens. Isn't that fun? Wow, we are contrasty. <laughs> so this is the Siri 35, um, and this is what we're going to be playing with today. Hopefully, I'll make it through. We'll see how that goes. Um, but before we get to that, uh, I just wanted to update you guys on something that I was working on from a previous stream. It was, I think, our second or third stream when I went to b and and I built a camera setup. And I was like, yeah, that was the weirdest stream. But out of that one, the takeaway was flags, Dimcom flags are very expensive. Um, they're like 60 bucks for a thing that's made of pipe. So I figured, can I do something that is a little better? And so I came up with this thing, which is basically a flag, but it costs a little less. <laughs> um, uh, this is a flexible arm from uh, helping hands from like soldering equipment. And I just tapped a quarter inch hole here and you can mount it on to your camera cage or your hot shoe, just like very easy. And uh, add some black wrap to, to control flares. So here I have the GH5. I'm just quickly showing this before a lot of people get in. Um, and this way I can reposition things and just get rid of flares wherever I need them to go away. Uh, I found it to be a pretty neat solution. So the kit that I bought came with four. I tapped all four and finished the things, but I only need one. So I'm getting rid of three. And if you're interested in this solution, you can check the shop. I only have those three there. And as soon as they're gone, I don't think I'm making any more. Uh, they come with the arm, a quarter inch to quarter inch adapter, and a little bit of black wrap that you can use on. Um, on the front. Max is saying that something is wrong with the video. It's skipping or something. Oh, I see it too. Uh, Blake, do you see that? Yeah, I think it's something to do with the live streaming from this. Yeah. I'm network related, I'm not sure. Not network related. I think it is network. Oh, it is network related. We gotta get people out of the network. Also, like myself. The video is uh, unlisted for a while. Right. Oh, okay. So I changed it to Okay, good, good, good. What is that? I see a cursor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, are we still skipping? We are. We are jumping. Okay. Um, any ideas? I'm not sure we could, we could just try to avoid this camera. Okay, uh, let's try to avoid this camera then. Let's see if the other ones are smoother. Yeah, this one looks way smoother. Okay. Uh, so I've talked about the little flag. If you're interested in that, check the shop. And here we are, here we have the Siri 35mm um, lens. And mine has the E-mount adapter on it. And hopefully we're gonna be getting into it. Hm. Just realized something. <laughs> um, Hello, I see people are still coming in. I'm gonna take a quick moment here and try to pick what am I picking? Yeah, okay, no, let's go for this. Just realized I did something wrong here. <laughs> um, okay, so today we're gonna open this lens and fit an aperture, an oval aperture in there. Uh, I did the same thing with the 50 mil. And the 35, it's not that challenging. We'll see how this goes, if it, if it works or if it doesn't. Um, look, we have so many cameras today. We're so fancy. Um, I'm actually surprised. I thought there would be more people. <laughs> um, so if you guys have any questions about the lens itself, uh, we can start with that. Um, before we jump onto that, you must have heard me talking to Blake. 
Blake is operating all of the streaming stuff, uh, OBS and switching between the cameras and helping me figure out all the technical issues like the skipping video that you're seeing right now. And this is only possible thanks to Blake. So thank him in the chat and like the video, please. Um, the other thing is, okay, I talked about the little arms. That was a thing. And yeah, if you got any questions about this lens in general, just shoot them in the chat and I'll, I'll try to keep up on what's going on there. Um, this lens comes in different mounts, like the default mount is MFT, but series providing adapters, you can add adapters onto your pledge for E-mount, EFM mount, which is the Canon mirrorless mount, and Nikon Z mount. And those adapters cost 10 bucks. It's interesting to notice that they dropped the Fuji X mount. Um, I don't know why I asked them about it. I asked them if they're planning to introduce the same system for the adapters that they did on this lens for the 50 mil. And I pitched them an idea. They said they're interested. It might take a little bit, but we might be able to see more mounts and more variety of, of possibilities of using this lens soon. Uh, that being said, we're not going to see EF mount here anytime soon. EF mount needs to chop this lens like up to here so it can fit on the camera and still get infinity focus uh, or any focus at all for that matter. So. If you're just here hoping for EF mount, uh, you're going to be disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, DMV Productions, this is already too many people. Uh, I say, and I may be alone here, that you and I continue this offline. Nobody else gets any information. It may influence your analytics in a negative way. But honestly, if you pay me, I will chat on you with you one-on-one -on -one and we'll get all of your questions figured out. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of consulting and I'm working towards that. So <laughs> it's not even a joke. You can, you can ask me questions and we'll get to that. We'll solve individual problems. Uh, okay. So talked about the lens a little bit, talked about the mount. Um, uh, what else? What am I going? Talked about Blake. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to mention before we get started on this, I see we get more people coming in, is I'm going to be doing uh, a live stream exclusive for members this Friday on how to play with the color of the flares on the Siri. It works for both the 50 and the 35. They're so saturated and they're so blue, it's pretty easy to pick them apart and after effects or resolve. So we're going to do a little bit of experimenting with that and you got to be a member of the channel to access that stream so if you're considering joining the channel this is a perfect moment to do so if you haven't subscribed yet anamorphic is the only thing that i talk about here um hit subscribe like the video eight likes and 18 people 19 people so let's like this video folks please uh it really helps me reach a bigger audience so this is it, uh, live stream on Friday. Let's begin trying to open this lens. Uh, looking at it, I can, I can tell that it seems much easier to go through the back. It feels like the aperture is closer. The aperture ring is all the way back here. So I'm gonna try going through the mount and we'll see where this is gonna lead me. Um, hello Emerson from Porto Alegre, very nice to see there's a lot of Brazilian people here. I see my mom's here, I haven't talked to her in a very long time. Um, I'll call you later today, mom. <laughs> so first thing I got to do is I got to take out this E-mount adapter and that is held together by four uh, Phillips screws. I'm just going to get the key here and remove them. I'm going to use this lens cap as my holder for all the screws. Hopefully there won't be too many. 
yeah, this rear element is large, and you, uh, we'll we'll see how that goes, Max. That's a very interesting thing. Um, my mom is now questioning if she misses me. I thought you did, mom. I thought you missed me. So here we go. And as you can see, adding and taking out this mount replacement is a fairly easy process. If you haven't seen my review, uh, there's a pin here on the mount that goes onto the MFG locking pin, which is here. Is this it? No, where is it? Oh, here, which goes here. So when you're putting the mount in, you rotate it until it clicks and then that's a perfect fit. And I thought this would be a great uh, application for the 50 mil as well. So you can have an MFG base mount and other mounts into it. Um, Max is mentioning that the exit pupil is also close to the rear element. Uh, you are correct. We are gonna get there. I'm breathing really close to the mic now. Uh, <laughs> So for taking out the MFT mount, I'm using a Torx 6 screwdriver. And there's four little screws that we're going to take out. Um, so I'm just keeping pressure down as I take these. So the screw doesn't strip. That's a good thing. The 50 didn't have any glue, but these ones are giving me a bit more resistance when I'm unscrewing them. So if you're following this process, be sure to apply proper pressure down so the screwdriver doesn't slip and damage the head of the screw. That would be very unfortunate. Well, shot the screw out. And our last fourth one. Uh, Daniel's saying the exit pupil should be large enough for Super 35. I mean, the lens covers Super 35. It would be surprising if it wasn't. Um, and Max say, says that the rotating locking system is similar to the CP2s with the mount, where there's stories of people installing it wrong and tightening screws, damaging the mount. Sounds excellent. Um, just what I like to hear. Lucas, this chat is like my mirror. Every time I look at it, there's only beautiful people. Oh my god. Really coming in hard on this now. <laughs> so I'm just going to lift the MFT mount out. And you can see here are our friendly shims. There's only one. Yeah, there's one shim. Two shims. I'm not going to take them out because I don't want to go through the trouble of putting them back in. My collection of pieces go here. And now I'm given a few different options. I got three screws. I guess I can point with this. One, two, three. And I got these holes. So let's see where this is gonna go. I think I'm gonna take these three first because I can see what's going on. Well, it seems that there's also uh, Phillips screws down there, so. We'll do both and see where this leads us. Uh, so Max was just talking about the size of this rear element. Um, let's see if it comes off and if it's something manageable. One. Two. And three. Huh. Yeah, Max is mentioning that an interesting test would be to remove these, the anamorphic block altogether and see how large is the image circle for just the spherical lens. Um, that is actually a pretty neat test, but I think I would have to disassemble the entire lens from the back as I don't see any axis points through the front. Um, let's see how far we can get. So I removed three tiny screws here and I'm just gonna pull out 
this. Uh, there's an element here just sitting on this housing didn't help me much i still can't get to the next element which i'm assuming means that i have to go through these tiny holes here and hope that this whole block is going to come off and we can access whatever it is in this element uh let's see how that goes i love taking out screws that are hidden oh i got the first one right Again, keep putting pressure down on these to make sure they won't slip. And since these are coming out of a secret hole, I would say try to pull them out straight so they don't fall back into the lens. Uh, not nervous at all doing this. Because if I mess up by myself, that's easy. But there's 40 something people watching not as easy um speaking of which uh if you're enjoying this type of content you should really subscribe to this channel consider joining as a member there's a lot of content coming up just for members there's exclusive videos there's more discounts there's ah shit <laughs> really gotta not swear here you didn't hear me say anything this last screw is proving itself to be more challenging. But as I was saying, subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to stay updated with everything that I'm doing. I'm posting videos every week and live streaming every week as well. So there's at least two things that you can get every week. Just here. And, uh, well, the last screw didn't come out. So... I think I've taken it out. It did. Okay. Last screw did not fall inside the lens. I'm putting it there. And I'm going to take... I think this whole part comes off, so I'm going to try to do that. Um, if you guys have any questions during this process, please shoot them in the chat. I'm keeping close attention here. Um, I don't know. I don't understand Russian. Please. Um, thank you, Sri John. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wildly wrong. Uh, awesome sauce. The goal is to put an oval insert inside of this lens. So I'm opening it and seeing if there's anything in the aperture that is going to work for uh, what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, Terence is bringing up a great question here. How does one donate to this uh, endeavor? And you can donate that through the super chat. It's just at the bottom of the chat, there's a dollar sign and your message will be pinned to the top. And it really helps with keeping these videos going. Um, it's it, I, I do this because I enjoy doing it, but it takes a lot of time. And I know this helps people with their work. So if you feel I've helped you out in a professional sense, please help me out in a professional sense too. Here we go. So we pull this out. There's a little catch somewhere, but it came out. Okay. Um... I see the aperture, we definitely got access to the element that we wanted to pull. Um, and I think I took out one too many things. There's a, this is the aperture ring. So this controls the aperture and now it spins freely, which I don't love. I think I'm going to have to put this back. I see there's a tiny lever here. It should be the aperture. Yeah, that is the aperture. Um, thank you, Aram, for your donation. That is amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, we need more people like you in this channel. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, this is a perfect time to shoot. So I pulled a little bit too much out of the lens and the aperture mechanism is now, it has come undone. But we'll figure out what to do out of there. Um, 
Andre is talking about how he was surprised and he thought I was debunking what Sirui was doing. Uh, actually, no, this is Sirui is a real anamorphic lens. I'm just trying to add an oval insert here so things are more anamorphic looking. Like if you want a tighter bokeh, if you want uh, more pronounced ovals, you got to do a little bit of modding since the squeeze factor is so low. So I'm just going to try and take out this element here and see what happens. Um, here we go. Okay. So we got this out. Uh, And we have the rear group, and we got to the aperture blades. I'm going to put the rear group facing down here. So there's a lot of, uh, hold on, DMV Productions, tell us of your home world. What do you mean by home world, my friend? Um, this is indeed the aperture, and it's so neat. It's got like 11 blades. I'm liking where this is going. Uh, let me catch up here. So the 5133 acts more like an 85 2x 185 on a full frame. Not sure if I follow the math. Uh, if you add an oval to the 50, it's gonna be like a 52x on full frame because that's where the focal length comes from um so no i guess not i guess that answers it uh so here we go uh we got the aperture open i have a bunch of little discs here these are discs that i've used for multiple mods I'm going to hope that uh, one of them is going to fit this sort of okay-ish, and we can go from there. Uh, I see Christian just joined us. Uh, hello, Christian. Did you manage to figure out the thing that you were having trouble with joining the channel? I hope YouTube got back to you. Um, uh, yeah, I thank you, Max, for taking on questions. <laughs> Uh, the discs are all transparent, and I'm just going to paint them with a permanent marker if we can find one that uh, works properly. So this is the, the unplanned part. I'm just going to see what's our best fit, our best match out of all these ovals, and, and try to go from there. I think there's a lot of questions now. Let's see. Um, does the oval insert have an impact on the brightness of the lens? Uh, yes, it does. It takes away between half a stop of light and one and a half stops of light. Since the painting is never fully uh, opaque, it still gets some light through, but you lose some light in this process. Yes. Uh, da -da -da. So in a cropped sensor, Thank you, Terrence. Thank you very much. This is amazing. Uh, <laughs> people, follow the lead of Aram and Terrence. Send some donations our way. Keep this show going. It's really It really takes like a couple hours of every day to have content and find things to show here and like buy gear, buy pieces of things. There's a cost to running this that I don't push forward. I, I want to keep all of this stuff on this channel free. And it relies heavily on you guys contributing to keeping this possible. So I appreciate all the donations and everybody who's joining as a member and everybody who's joining uh, as a subscriber. We're going to keep talking about the Siri a lot during this month. Uh, I think it's a fantastic lens and there's a few more videos about it if this works for sure. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Shiko's asking, can this be adapted to EF mount cameras? Will this lens and the 35 mil version pass super 35 sensor size cameras? 
they will not perform very well above on sensors bigger than Super 35. If you want to adapt this to EF, the lens has to go about this much and like the mount comes about here, the EF mount. So you have to figure out how to discard all of these parts and still have a usable lens. Considering the aperture is here, I don't think that's possible. So no EF mount. Um, Andre is asking about the Kobe and age and how much that's worth now. It varies, something between 900 and 1500 bucks. So great lens. There's a bunch of rebrands, so you can probably get a cheaper one. Um, oh, Christian, that's very upsetting, I guess. The... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll figure that out. Andrew says, I've been using a speed booster to shoot with medium format lenses on full frame. Huge field of view. Any idea of uh, if there is an anamorphic front lens that would work on medium format? I actually want to test that out on a camera that offers better support for full frame uh, and anamorphic shooting than the a7S, something that will give me the whole sensor. So I'm working towards that. Uh, if you can point me out to what's a good speed booster from medium format to full frame, I would love to hear that. Um, I talked a little bit about the light loss on the ovals before. You lose something between half a stop and one and a half stops, depending on the size of the oval. Uh, a 2x is going to cut more light, but it's also going to give you an oval that's 2x 1.33. So 2.66 bokeh instead of two. Uh, doing the math, you would end up with a 1.5 disc plus 1.33 squeeze, and that's gonna give you perfect two times ovals. Um, okay, so let's see. Awesome Sauce, do you think I could mod a Canon 58mm f1.2 for oval bokeh and anamorphic flares? You can definitely do that. I am dying to try out some Canon FDs and FLs because I got a lot of people asking about them. So if you want to buy the lens and send it here, I'll mod it live and send it back. How about that? <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, my dad's here. Hi, dad. Uh, thank you, Aaron, for appreciating the hard work. It, 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 it really is hard work. It's been my main work during quarantine. So it's not a thing that I'm just, hey, I'm doing this for fun. It's, I send so many emails about this project every day you guys don't even know about it <laughs> um all right dmv productions do you have a venmo or a f alternate donation method i don't like getting updates but i would like to donate okay here we go there's a paypal address let's see if it's gonna work this time paypal.me tfairdance usd Oh, it worked. The link worked now. Thank you, Terrence, for pointing that out. DMV Productions, you can follow that link and send a donation. Uh, that is greatly appreciated. Aram is asking, will the 35mm anamorphic give you vignetting on your A7S full frame? Yes, it does. If I'm shooting full frame, there's a lot of vignetting, actually. Um, uh, the corners get very dark and we still have to punch in. I'm covering that on another video. Joe, thanks for becoming a member of the channel. This is amazing. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This means a lot to me. Uh, and people believe in this channel and really want to commit to it. I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, uh, Shiku, thanks. I like these guys more than Vazen. I hope they eventually do a larger sensor and 1.8 or 2x. Do you expect them to? I heard they're working on more lenses, but I don't have a timeline and I don't know the focal lengths and I don't know the squeeze factors, but I'm trying to get closer to work with them on other projects. So maybe I'll have updates in the near future. I'm still trying to figure out those lens mounts. Uh, all right. Um, Andrew, I've been using the Keepon Bav Eyes. Okay, I'm gonna look into that. Um, a7S and Alexa LF. Okay. So I'm going to look into those. Last time I looked, it was like 600 bucks. So it might be a little out of budget. I might need more people donating and joining the channel so I can afford such adapter. Uh, <laughs> just shameless plugs now. Uh, DMV, we went by your focus method for the COA by disassembling and modding the front element, but now it's constantly falling in 
or out of focus? Is there a better suggestion to fixing a Koa 2X without glue? Um, the glue is actually a faulty solution. I'm working on an updated version of that tutorial in which you can just use the same screws to lock down the tabs. Um, it just takes a little bit longer, but it lasts more time and it's more reliable than the glue. There's another way in which you get through the back of the lens, but I haven't tested that out very much and I don't know how reliable that is yet. I've heard great things, I just don't have first-hand experience. Um, Janin Palahiki, how's it going, Janin? <laughs> Anamorphic forever. Also, never cut your hair again. Uh, it's getting there. It's getting long enough that I'm gonna put up for a vote if you guys want me to cut my hair and then we'll do it live while answering questions. So that's gonna be a fun thing to happen. Um, Christopher is asking if I mod lenses uh, for people for money. I've done that in the past and I stopped because shipping gets uh, becomes a huge liability. Uh, things go missing in the mail and I don't want to be responsible for somebody else's lens. So I don't do that very much. I also have no professional training as a lens tech. So I think there's other people there or just follow the tutorials. They're usually straightforward. Um, I hope that answers. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep going forward here a little bit and then I'm gonna catch up on what's going on in this chat. -na 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 -na. I'm gonna try, okay, this is too big. This is too small. Back in there. Blake's trying to fix something. This is almost a good fit. Interesting. I see it goes a little, Oh no, it's not gonna work because there's a step here that's gonna crush this oval into place and I don't love that. I could maybe cut it to make it fit, but not really my plan for now. So let's see if we find a better one. Um, there's some tiny ones in here that I'm betting are not gonna work. A little too small. Okay, not stressful at all. Okay, I think these are a little big too. Also a little too big. Oh guys, this might not go very far. So these are the inserts for the 50 mil and they almost work. You can see they're a little bit too big on here. So I'm cropping the top of the oval and the bottom and they also don't fit as neatly as I want them to. Uh, oh no, these are the Gellius 44 inserts. They're not the original Siri. Uh, down to two. I guess this is obviously not a fit. But there's some smaller in here. There's one that's already painted black. Okay, let's uh, let's try that. Oh yeah, okay, now we're in business. This worked, this worked really well. Uh, if I open it up, will it fall down? Hmm, okay, this is kind of perfect. But this one's already painted and it's 1.5. So I'm gonna take this out and replace it with a transparent one. Lucas, thank you. Dude, you are the best. You are uh, such an inspiration. Oh yeah, it is for Blake. There you go, Blake. You're getting it now. This is just for you. Amazing. Yes, that's the way to go. Uh, so we got ovals that fit. It's a miraculous fit here. Uh, I got a 1.5 and I got it two times. So I guess it's up to you guys. Do you guys want me to do what size? 1.5 or 2x for this? Uh, let me know. In the meantime, let's catch up on what's going on. Uh, wow. I stop answering questions and you guys flood me with stuff? That's not fair at all. Um, Steve Holt, if Siri made a 1.5 times squeeze, and even if they double the price, I'd be very interested. I hope they're successful and make more lenses. Just a little more squeeze would be nice. I second that, uh, considering how their Indiegogo campaign is going, I think it's at 
4,000% funded. Uh, let me just take a look at that. Um, quickly to see how that campaign is going. How many, how much percent? Yeah, it's 9,000% funded. So I guess it is working. <laughs> they are definitely being successful in that and I hope they continue making lenses. Um, Aram agrees with that. Uh, DMV Productions, thank you. Stay tuned. Uh, oh, yay. Repost my stuff. Yeah, share the videos. Help me reach more people. Uh, it. I really got to grow this channel. We need more people here, guys. Anamorphic is becoming a main thing. And there's a lot of random stuff out there that is not reliable. This is what I'm here to fix. <laughs> uh, somebody became a member. Who is that? Christian. Yeah, you did it. Thanks, man. Woohoo. You succeeded. I'm so happy to see that. Um, Aram is mentioning the Ivoscope 1.5. Aligning it to a taking lens can be a pain sometimes. Uh, I haven't tried the Ivoscope in a long time, since last year when I like played with it five minutes. That's one of the lenses I really want to try on this channel, but there's so much stuff in line. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Awesome Sauce just got the 58FL for... 150 euro so congrats man uh, if you see another cheap one please let me know <laughs> all right shiku's talking about the maxi scope i'm waiting for mine okay uh nikhil is saying the live's already finished it's not finished man um i hope you are still here um the Siri doesn't mount to EF, but you'll get there. You'll get something that works. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> Moses, almost missed all the fun. We're, we're getting there. Uh, you missed me stressing out about the first part. I got to actually speed it up, I guess. Um, DMV's talking about the 58FL. I thought the Russian lens. Okay, awesome sauce. So you are that person. Okay. Good to know. Good to put a face to the writing. Um, uh, Trevor, I'm still going to have to put this together. Uh, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Lucas sending here money for Blake. This is amazing. And I think I caught up with... Everything. Okay, so two times people started voting on the disc. Two times, two times, two times, two times. I guess there's a winner here. It's definitely two times. Um, Lucas is saying he ordered his. Amazing. Um, the Indiegogo is crushing it. If they can deliver a full frame anamorphic for 225k, that would break the market. Yes, that would. I mean, they are breaking it with this $600, $800 lenses. So, uh, they are already breaking it. They just can break it more. Uh, everybody's going with two times. Thank you, everyone. Uh, here we go. Okay. A super telephoto anamorphic possible. Yes, it is. I've done 300 mil. So yes, it is possible. Uh, yes, uh, Cinespedia. Y así es como aparece un comentario en español. Uh, I can understand. If you want to type in Spanish, I will understand just fine <laughs> okay so everybody voted for the two times uh disc and since this disc fits so well i'm gonna put this on the shop and you can go and get yours now there's a code for it uh before you do that if you're a member of the channel there's gonna be a better discount code so keep an eye on the community tab after this video and you're gonna get your exclusive code that gives you more discount uh if you're just modding with if you're not a member of the channel there you go you got uh, oops too many things came together on that link uh, I don't know will it work though no it does not work uh, let's try whoops too many slashes shop this is the shop and the code at checkout is Siri mods which will give you 15% off but again if you're a member of this channel do not use this code, you're gonna get a better one. Uh, I see Andre has joined us as a member, thank you. It's amazing, man, I really appreciate. Uh, we're gonna keep going. 
Okay, two times disk. I see we're running out of time. I'm gonna have to reassemble this thing fast. So let's paint my fingers black, huh? How about that? Um, and so he's changing. Tell us more about diopters. Uh, George, uh, George, Jorge, uh, please say how I correct your name. I'm using diopters. They're a subject for a video that's coming up soon. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna like that one. It goes in depth about it. And here we go. I'm gonna paint this with a permanent marker, and then I'll catch up with what you guys are saying. And you don't have to do the best job of painting it. So the discs are always transparent, and I paint them black. I paint them with multiple layers just to make sure it shapes the oval best. And it was a providence to have this paper down here. What a coincidence, huh? It's almost like I felt I was going to succeed. Okay, this is enough for one side. I'm going to turn it around, paint the other side. Um, if Max is still around, I think he would want me to keep going. I see tiny screws all around this lens. But I'm sorry, Max, I'm not going to disassemble this lens fully as my sister is using it for a short film this weekend. So I have big interest in keeping it working at least for a few more days before I can break it. Um, okay, so this is black now. It's good enough. And oh, there's a bunch of challenging things to do, actually. Uh, let's see here. Shiko, how long before we have more players who are really indie level for anamorphics? Uh, I know no such thing exists now, but eight years ago, we didn't have the luxury for lower budget digital cameras. I know, man. Uh, I think this is what Siri is doing. And to some extent, Vazen and Atlas, uh, they're doing that as well. Uh, so that, let's just hope the somebody keeps pushing the limits on what's achievable. Okay. Uh, Afif is asking if I can try anamorphic live stream. These are usually in anamorphic. I've been using the Siri 35 for live streaming. This is the only one that is not because, well, I had to take the lens apart. <laughs> um, so that's that. Okay, no more questions. This is going well. I'm going to pick up this oval and I'm going to drop it in here. I have to solve the problem of how I'm going to get this lever back to working. Uh, so this has to fit in there somewhere. And I have a feeling that this comes apart. So now I have little, what is this called? Tooth is going to go around this aperture lever. It's going to be good. And I'm guessing these locking things should go around this other pin that's here. So that limits the rotation of the ring. So let's try that. Let's see if I can land this here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And it closes and it opens and that's good, good. Now I just plucked this out and there's three screw holes for the screws that we took out and there's this extra hole which I'm betting aligns with this pin. So I'm going to try to make this match there. All right. But wait, I shouldn't be doing this yet. Let's keep this here. I need to screw back this rear element. And um, we're running out of time, so I'm just going to finish rebuilding. But if you're doing this, take more time and clean everything properly. I have all my cleaning stuff here, but we're going to run out of time. Um, here we go. This goes in here. And if I'm right, I'm expecting the oval inside to ro start rotating because I'm screwing this in. So that's going to be a challenge. Um, let's see. Not yet. Now it is. So you can see this oval rotating in here because this friction is holding it down. We want it to align with something. We want it to align with the same direction of the squeeze. How are we going to find that out? There's a part of the lens that faces up. It's this line. 
So we want the longer side of the oval to point in that direction. And that also matches this pin that we're guiding the next part. So if the oval matches the orientation of this pin, we're good to go. That's what we're going to do. Um, let's try that. It's a little bit off. If it's on the table, is it visible? Yeah. Like, like if, you, if I put it like this, though? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's just not visible for me. I'm going to lean in here. So this is where it should be, but it's not. So I'm going to unscrew back a little. And what I'm going to try is to pull up the element and hope that the threads disengage from the oval. And it just allows me to rotate a little bit more without turning the oval. And it kind of does for a little bit. Almost there. I just need a little more play. There we go. And now I wanted to rotate it back. Oh, it got worse. Okay, so I guess I need more. Oh, here we go. And now I'm going to tighten it. The oval is kind of pointing to where this dot is. Uh, I just quickly read Max's comment on, I hate their font. I couldn't agree more. Uh, <laughs> it's very generic. Okay, so we got the oval to align this that aligns the top of the lens and it might need a little bit of fine tuning, but I'm gonna finish reassembling so we can finish this tutorial. So this the little pin is here and it's here. I'm just gonna try to wing it. Okay, this worked. Um, now I'm gonna screw back everything else. This. The three tiny screws are here. I'm just a little anxious because if I keep dropping these screws, they're going to land inside the lens and I'm going to have to open it back up and rescue them. So try to put them in as straight as possible. Oh, first one is a match. Um, here we go. Uh, Max is talking about Vazen. Vazen has a lot of potential. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of them. They just announced their 85 mil full frame lens, uh, also 1.8 stretch. So trying to get one of those so you guys can see what it does. Uh, uh, second screw. No, yeah, here we go. Uh, Chadman Smith, broken on a set in the past that they are gonna make anamorphic lenses, but it still hasn't happened. I really hope they decide to, after seeing the success series having with them. Yeah. Rokinon, I don't know, man. That rumor has been around for a very long time. Um, I don't know what to make out of it. Third little screw. Uh, time for a haircut. I don't know. I don't know. I'm growing this hair because I have a purpose. Uh, you'll get to know that purpose soon enough. But I guess a haircut's kind of inevitable. Uh, Aram, yeah, I think Siri is going to inspire the market to create some more affordable anamorphic lenses. The fun thing is, if the market doesn't catch up, uh, Siri is going to own the market and no one's going to have a chance. Uh, so they better hurry. I'm going to add back this element that I took out that I absolutely didn't have to. So I'm just matching the screws. Um, I just had shorter screws, so it's these guys back and having a screwdriver with a magnetic tip really helps here uh, here we go andre is saying he printed the diopter holder for the la7200 i'm glad to hear that project still helps people it made it so long ago every once in a while somebody's like are you still making those um i think it was a limited run. <laughs> uh, Max is talking about how Vazen is resurrecting a very interesting design uh, in terms of focusing, and that is very true. It's going to be a subject for something of a future video, but I'm not going to spoil it now. Um, 
Okay. No, it's not the Gottschalk Panavision design. <laughs> the font of Vazen's font is supposed to annoy you on purpose. That's the first time I'm hearing that one. Um, I love how there's only members of the channel actively messaging now. Love you guys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jen, I don't think my hair will get as long as yours, uh, although one day it was. I just needed to get to 10 inches. Now I'm going to add back the mount. The shims are still here. Uh, this MFT mount kind of goes pointing up, I think. I never remember this part. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see, but the screws, the outer screws have aligned with holes. And I'm going to lock the mount back into place with this Torx key. All right. Uh, Terrence is asking, on the anamorphic calculator, are there equations for how valuable donating to this channel is? <laughs> ah, man. Love this. Uh, there aren't expressions for that. There definitely should be, because... It is very important. Donations are a key part of keeping this channel going. Uh, I see there's 74 people watching and we had four, three donations so far. So there's 71 more people that could contribute to this. Uh, don't be shy, guys. Donate a dollar. I dare you. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm just putting back the screws back on the mount. There's a lot of Back, back, back. Um, there's one missing. Uh, Afif, once anamorphics are mainstream, which squeeze amount would you think would be the most common or default? Uh, trick question. Two times has been the default for the longest, but if you take into account sensor size and usage area, there's a great chance 1.8 will be wildly successful and... Who has 1.65? Is it Zeiss? Zeiss. Am I saying this right, Lucas? If you're still around. Um, Cineblogs is asking, this is a Torx 6 screwdriver. I just have it as a part of a kit. And it has a bunch of sizes. I've used most of these sizes in the process of disassembling lenses and other things. I recommend the variety. <laughs> it's a very cheap set, too. Um... Trevor Pinocchi. Chitu is growing his hair out of for an upcoming role of Hercules in one of his films. You almost make me want to do that, but acting and I are not do not go well together. Uh, so this is the lens and MFT mount. I actually never had it on the Panasonic, so I might as well do that now. Um, let's try that. This is my GH5. And if I put the mount incredibly wrong, this is not going to go anywhere. I think I'm trying to fit it the wrong way. The red dot goes there. Yeah, I was definitely trying to fit it the wrong way. I'm still trying to fit it the wrong way. What am I doing wrong? Here we go. I did it. Um, as you can see, I mounted this wrong. <laughs> the lens is sideways and this is definitely not how it should be <laughs> so i'm gonna have to take out the mount and fix it this thing is to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise okay good good call mounting the lens before i called it done um there you go all right let's take this out then you guys enjoyed this tool so much, I just keep going for it. Okay. Um, uh, Ankit, oh, there's something that's just so satisfying about seeing something being taken apart and putting back together. I couldn't agree more. Uh, this still scares the hell out of me every single time. Um. Hey, thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much. This is amazing, man. Let's convince Siri to get an EF mount then. 
Z. Zeiss, Lucas? Would that be better? Zeiss. Can I do it? Did I do it right this time? Okay. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm guessing it's somewhere here. Nope. Somewhere here. Yeah. Okay. So this is the proper orientation. The red dot goes along with this line. So the red dot on the mount goes along with the line. That's what you need to do if you're putting back your MFT mount and <laughs> you wanted to match the proper placement of things. Here we go. All right. Do it. Um, Joe, I so want to send you a work trace, something with edges to those screws. Don't roll away. Dude, I would really appreciate that. Um, I'm still getting used to this live stream setup. I'm surrounded by stuff here. I can barely like open my arms. Uh, there's so many moving parts that need to be around. A working tray would fit here nicely instead of this sheet of paper. Um, that'd be nice. I guess it's an upgrade for the next mod. <laughs> uh, here we go. Since we're talking so much about my hair, uh, I enjoyed this conversation because once somebody left a comment saying, that they really appreciated the content, but they couldn't subscribe or follow the steps because my hair was so unprofessional. And I was, I was really taken aback. It was the year that I was going to film school and this was a reason for a lot of jokes and a lot of laughing uh, for several months, I guess. Um, so yeah, I like to grow my hair for my secret reason that you're gonna know soon enough. And also to upset people, because what is a professional looking hair, huh? So unprofessional. Oh man, it's crazy. Um, so I'm adding back the E-mount, it clicks in place. Um, we just got this going. Oh, Lucas is really teaching me here. And a double S also means it's super sharp, kind of like the S in snake. So in front and the back. Okay, so... Size. Size? Is that going? Is that working? Uh, I didn't do this right. Uh, it's not my day, guys. I put the screws back in wrong three times now. I'm going to have to take them out once more. <laughs> this is what's blowing up our time. It's me putting wrong screws in. So it's not the outermost screws that need to be put back in. It's the innermost ones. So I guess they do have the same threads and the same size, which can be a little confusing. Cindy Blogs is saying at least rotating it uh, is an easy way to get it 90 degrees. Yeah, if I wanted to shoot vertical video, that would be the way to go. Actually, that's a bug or a feature to be decided. What do you guys think? <laughs> Being able to align the lens uh, 90 degrees off. Is that a bug or a feature? All right. Okay, so I did it right. Um, I've, I've been seeing a lot of people saying the name of this lens wrong, and it upsets me too. Like, things have a name. It's like my name. People say my name wrong all the time. I got used to it, but I try not to say other things wrong. Uh, it reminds me of Vazen again, because when I recorded that video, I said Vazen every single time I mentioned the lens name, and it turns out it was Vazen. So I had to record a bunch of additional voiceover uh, to, just to patch that up. So I'm adding the screws back on the mount, and I'm doing that in a crisscross shape. So I'm putting one screw on the left, one screw on the right, and I'm not tightening them all the way just yet because that's going to give me the most stable configuration. All right, here we go here. Third one. Eh, really doesn't want to come with me. Okay. What lens is on the camera for the close-up shot? I like it. I dropped the lens. I dropped the screw on the glass. Uh, Nick, that is... Uh, it's a 50 mil contact size. I caught myself. Um, 
the 51.4 and we have it stop down to F16. So it's kind of aggressively stopped down. Otherwise, the field of view would be a little too hardcore. The depth of field would be a little too hardcore. Okay, so the last screw is here. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I could play Samson. That the power is in his hair. That's very true. Awesome sauce. But then I would lose my power if I get a haircut. So not sure if I want that roll. Um, so now I'm going to tighten these screws again in a cross configuration. Um, left one first, then on the right, then on the top, then on the bottom. And always pressing down to avoid stripping the screws. I did put a lot of dust in there, but you can see that the oval is in here. We have succeeded doing this. Um, and you can still stop down the aperture fine the only thing that's going to happen is the oval shape is going to get cut off uh, i guess there's too much reflection here maybe this camera will see it better like let me know <laughs> okay so we can still stop it down and open it up uh, and that works fine so if you need to stop down uh you can I have a different recommendation, which is using a variable ND. That's going to be the subject of the next video coming on Monday, I guess. Since I succeeded in this, I have to shoot an episode on how to do this in less than an hour uh, <laughs> and show up some upgrades that I'm also doing for this lens, like lens caps, the, the variable ND that I'm using, and everything else. Uh, I see that this camera stopped that skipping issue, so I appreciate that camera. Very good job. Uh, <laughs> Let's catch up on this chat. I think this is it for uh, the technical part of the stream. I'm just gonna leave the lens here. If you have questions about this 35 mil or anything in general, this is the time to do it. If you wanna make a donation for the channel, this is also just as, a, as good of a time to do it. Um, here we see, I'm professional hair. Yeah, that's a thing, man. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> Um, and yeah, when I go bald, people say it's unprofessional too. Uh, so we have succeeded putting back the lens just in time. We're just a few minutes over. We started a few minutes late, so it's all good. Um, this is the time where I say you should become a member of this channel. If you like this video, you should hit the like button because it's almost like 44 likes to 74 viewers could be more balanced. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us on this enterprise. I'm glad this worked out that I had a disc that worked. If you want to mod your Siri 35 mil, I already put the, the listing in my shop. Uh, the link is in the chat and you can use a code, the code in the chat, in the chat, it's Siri mods altogether, um, for 15% off. If you're a member of the channel, don't use that code because you're going to get more discount. So just check the community tab after this video is done. Um, all right. Thanks, Aram. Uh, we succeeded. We have uh, done it. It's never a bug, always a feature. Good point there. I should not include the word hairist in my vocabulary. Well, there you go. All right, all right, all right. I'm just catching up. Tito, uh, Trevor's asking, Tito, do you know of anyone that makes custom mounts? I have a Vedra, and you can change your own mounts. Since they're gone, I can't get the mounts I want now. Oh, man. Um, I would approach somebody that does adapters. They probably have all the specs for the mounts and could easily work that out. Uh, maybe Photodeox, maybe... I think Photodeox would be your best bet. Um... But that's a concerning thing. I, I bet it would be hard to find those in, uh, in the used market. Uh, hey, thank you, Coscarelli. <laughs> uh, Coscarelli fan. Thank you for your donation. I'm glad you appreciate it. And I'm happy you got your 35 mil. It's going to go great with the 50. Um, 
I think these line, if they do a wider next, if they do a 24 or 25, I'm going to be very impressed. Uh, and then what? Then a longer one, like a 75 or 85. Um, but yeah. Hi, Andre. How's it going? Uh, there's a form on my website that you can use to send me messages or you can just send messages here. This one's almost over, so uh, I'm putting the link in the chat as well. It's on the description of every video. You can send me questions or notes there. Um, skipping camera, filming on the R5. <laughs> Took me a second, but no, one of our phones was misbehaving and saying, and just jumping frames. Max was the one that updated us about it. Uh, Nikhil is asking, can I take E-mount version and use it with an EF mount with a converter? Uh, I don't think there's such thing. I'm making a video on that subject, actually, of using mirrorless lenses on EF or like SLR type cameras. Because it's not as easy as it sounds. It's actually a hell of a job. <laughs> um, Bogar, Bogar is asking if it's the same oval for the 50. It's not. It's a smaller one that I found here among my various inserts. I'm going to have to make some more. So if you guys are ordering that, I will have them in stock. Um, what's the difference in putting the element in the middle instead of just at the back glass? So the aperture is where the light crosses. There's a name for it. Max is probably going to be great at explaining this. But the aperture is the ideal place for these inserts. It's where it's going to get the better, the best performance and the best uh, light use, you're going to lose the least amount of light and get the best uh, sharpness and the least amount of vignetting, as opposed to just putting it on the back here or on the front, like the Cinemore filters. So that's why they are inside of the lens that I go through all of this trouble. Uh, Lucas, the Vedra founders now works for Make It. Their MFT series are said to be Vedra clones. Well, then yeah, shoot, make an email. Um, as this film, just an off-topic question. I saw many of your videos on YouTube. Can I find? Can I found somewhere? Your works on the internet. Thank you. Uh, some of my shorts are on the channel. You can find those there. I've been uh shooting a lot of stuff that didn't go online yet because it's going to festivals. Uh, so I also enjoy a lot more doing this stuff than working on set. Recently, I'm about to head back on set for a feature film starting next week. So wish me luck. We're going to shoot an anamorphic and it's going to be a blast. Blake's going to join me. Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, if I mount this, I'm going to have to mount it on the a7s. So I'm going to pull this camera out. Uh, still connected. So you can probably see what's going to happen here. Uh, let's not drop the lens like I did last time. And E-mount, E-mount. This goes here. And no, it's not vertical. And you can also see that I'm very overexposed at ISO 1 billion. Um, and you can see the vignette now. Like You can see how weird this looks. Minimum focus is not getting there yet. Um, it's very far. Stopping it down. This doesn't reach minimum focus. You can see Blake there. But yeah, I did mount it and it worked. So there you go. Uh, things I learned today that you can be very lucky and find ovals that are perfect sized for your lens. Uh, the Siri 35 is an easy disassemble. And um, I guess that's it. Uh, I mounted on the camera. Uh, Marco is saying, I have joined late. I'm sorry, but I will rewatch. I'm very curious about the anamorphic now, probably on my Gallius 44 too. Yeah, you should do that. That's amazing. Gallius 44 is a super easy mod. I had, a, I have several tutorials on how to do it. I did a live stream recently about it. So, um, okay. Um, the weekly online, do the ovals match shape wise for the 50 and 35? The ovals for the 50 are a little bit bigger than the ones that I'm using for this one. Uh, the shape is either 2x or 1.5, so the oval size 
has to be scaled to the aperture size, which is not the same. Um, so there you go. Um, all right, here we go. Yeah, I am making a video about all of this. I uh, just want to say goodbye. Thank you, Ankit, for joining us. Um, this is indeed a great community of people, and uh, I'm so glad you guys are joining this. I'm going to keep making them, and I hope you guys keep showing up every Wednesday. Uh, we'll see how that goes with the feature. It's going to be challenging. Okay. Uh, Andre, do you think we could watch Real Jobs shot in a number of fix in the end as an inspiration? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's just hard to get the client's permit to put it online on the channel for free without any kind of pay. Um, I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, Ed Garin, uh, please, I need you to compare the face in 28 to the Siri 35. Uh, they're wildly different, man. They're they're very very different lenses. Um, we'll get there eventually. Thanks, Jenin. I hope uh, the, the the feature goes smoothly, and um, that's it. Uh, Adrian, uh, I might take a commission project if it's not uh, lens modding, but do I know of any M mount anamorphic lens? Not at the top of my head. All right, guys, we are 15 minutes over. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining. And I will see you guys on Monday with a shorter tutorial for this. And on Wednesday, talking about the Siri 35 in general, I guess. Answering questions, a Q&A session. I'll see you there. Bye-bye. <laughs>